hello my friends and welcome in this video i'm going to show you how to add the loading indicator in your angular application and in the demonstration that i'm going to show you i'm using angular 18 and it doesn't matter on the version of angular that you are using the processes and the steps that i'm going to show you on this demonstration will work on any version of angular that you are using to start i'm going to show you how this is going to be looking like and what you're going to be achieving so I'm having a welcome page like this one. And once I click on employees, we will make an HTTP call to the backend. And before we display all of these results, we have to show the loading indicator. And this can um, improve the user experience. Instead of uh, having a blank page upon the loading of the content, we may be having this loading indicator, indicating that we are loading something from a certain backend or certain service. And again, before we start, make sure to check the description for the link on where you can get to the project files, including the starting project and the finished project. And I made that for free. You can check on my GitHub and make sure to leave a star on there. I'm going to go into my code editor. And before we start, I'm going to show you the version which doesn't have a loading spinner. And we will continue to improve that while we are going. So I'm going to say ng serve to open the development server. And once it's started, we can go back to the browser and try to go on home. So let's try to go into this link. And once you click on employees, you can see that it is now loading employees without showing the loading indicator. And if you take a closer look, you can see that there is a blank page before we see the contents. And that's the behavior that we need to remove and add the loading indicator to indicate that we are loading something from the back end. And for the back end, I have this simple back end that I made using .NET. It doesn't matter on the back end that you are using, but I have these two endpoints on where I'm going to hit to get the list of employees. And I'm going to be showing you the source files on how we uh, get the data from that endpoint into my code editor. When you go to the source and go to the app, this is now the starting point project that we will be uh, starting with. We can start from scratch by writing everything. It can take a while. I decided to make this as simple as possible. So when you go into the um, core project and go to the API service, you will see there will be this link for initializing the um, where I get my data. And there will be this uh, core, this method that is going to call the uh, this endpoint to get the list of employees. And inside my um, employee component, employees component, I'm going to be showing this card with the information for the employee. And you can see I add this um, on in need. So once it is going to be initialized, it's going to call this method. And this method is going to call the API service for getting the list of employees. In order to start and add this loading indicator, I'm going to use the ngx spinner, which is now the Angular package for um, spinner uh, or the loader. It depends on how you call it. You can see that this, there is this command on how to install it. It's very straightforward. I'm going to copy this. And before we install this package, you can see that there will be demos on uh, how it is going to be looking like. There, will, there is a bunch of um, loaders you can choose from. You can choose, for example, this one. You can choose any other loader that you need. There is a bunch of them. But for this demonstration, I'm going to be using uh, this one. This is my favorite one. And this is the one that I'm going to be showing you. Not this, uh, but um, this one for the scale lipo. And this is the loading indicator that I like. You can choose any of the indicator or the loading spinner you need. It depends on your favorite and your taste. And I'm, I'm going to minimize this and go back to my project. I'm going to add a new terminal tab and I'm going to paste in the command to install this uh, package. So I'm going to press enter. And once this is installed, we are going to load the CSS for the indicator that we need. As we install this package, there will be a bunch of CSS for different indicators and we need to choose one. I'm going to go into the angular.json and below this, I'm going to add another node module and I'm going to say node, node modules. And in this case, I'm going to say ngx spinner and I'm going to choose animations and I'm going to say bore scale lipo like this one. NGX spinner animations, borske lipo.css. We are going also to provide this into our app.component.cs. And I'm going to say NGX uh, spinner module. And I'm going to import this one. Make sure you have this import. 
If you don't have it, make sure to check to see if you are having it. Unless we'll be having the Ella on this module. Right. After doing this, as we're going to be dealing with the HTTP, I'm going to add an HTTP interceptor into our project. And to do that, I'm going to say NGG interceptor to generate the interceptor. And I'm going to be putting this into my core project and I'm going to make a folder that is called interceptors. Um, assuming that we may have a lot of them. And I'm going to call this as a loading and I'm going to skip the test because I don't want to create the test file. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and press enter. After creating this interceptor, the next thing that you need to do is to provide it into the app.config.ts. And once I am in here, I'm going to say that I'm going to provide um, HTTP client and I'm going to say with interceptors. And the interceptor that I'm going to be adding is now the loading interceptor, right? This one. Make sure to do this because if you don't do that, the, the interceptor is not going to be implemented. And, the, and this is now the new approach in Angular 17 and 18. I struggled with this approach when I started to use the standalone components. But now, if you watch this video, you are so lucky. You will no longer be stuck on this. So after providing that one, we are going now to also provide the browser animation so as to be able to allow the animation. So I'm going to say import providers from. And I'm going to say I'm going to provide the browser animation module. Make sure you add this one too. After adding this one, I'm going to create a service that will help us to show the indicator and to stop it. So I'm going to go again into my terminal and I'm going to generate that service. I'm going to say NGGS for service. And it is going to be into the core project. And I'm going to call this as um, busy. And I'm going to skip the test again. And press enter to generate the service. And once the service is created, I'm going to go into the service and we're going to start by um, by creating um, a property that will help us for the uh, request count. I'm going to call this as busy uh, request count like this one. And I'm going to give this initial value of zero. And into the constructor, we are going to inject the spinner service. I'm going to say private spinner uh, service and I'm going to say uh, spinner service. Uh, I'm going to say ngx ngx spinner service here it is and after doing that we are going to add the two method the one will be for uh, busy which will show the indicator the other one will be called idle which will which will now remove the indicator I'm going to start by adding the busy one I'm going to say busy and I'm going to go inside here and the first thing that we need to do is to increment this uh, busy re request count I'm going to increment it and after that I'm going to say this dot spinner service like this one and I'm going to say that this dot spinner service, um, and I'm going to say uh, show so to be able to show it. And then we need to provide some of the parameters in here as shown here. And the first one is going to be the name, and the other one is going to be um, the for the options for the spinner. So I'm going to make the first one. I'm going to call this as undefined. And I'm going to be adding the properties in here. The first one, I'm going to choose the type as we uh, we chose this as bar scale lipo, like this one. That's a, the one I'm going to choose. And it's going to also ask for the BD color. And the color that I'm going to be choosing, I'm going to say RGBA. And I'm going to say zero, zero, zero. And I'm going to give the opacity of 0 0.8. And after that, I'm going to go down and add the color for the spinner itself. And I'm going to make it white. So I'm going to say FFF. And again, I'm going to choose the size so as to be able to make sure that we get the correct size. I'm going to make this as a default one. And this would be it for um, this would be it for the uh, busy. And again, I'm going to add the other one for the idle. So I'm going to say idle. And once this is going to be um, finished the loading, it's going to call this idle method. And the way I'm going to implement this, I'm going to decrement the busy request count. Uh, the, the, this does busy request count. I'm going to decrement it. 
And the next we're going to say if uh, this, we want to check even now the business service is less than or greater than zero after decrementing it. So I'm going to say business request count is less than or equal to zero. And once this is equal to zero, I'm going to go ahead and say this dot busy request count is going to be again zero, like the initial value that we were having once we, we were initializing it at the, at the start. And I'm going to say that this dot spinner service, I'm going to say hide and this is it. All right. After adding this busy service, we are going to go and go into the app.component.ts here. And again, we're going to go into the template file and we need to add the spinner at the top. And the way we, and the way we do that, I'm going to say ngx spinner and I'm going to press enter and I'm going to provide the loading message. I'm going to say, I'm going to add the paragraph. I'm going to give it a, a, a class of text white. And I'm going to call this as loading, uh, loading like this one. And all right, save. And after that, we're going to go into the interceptor to add the, the condition so to be able to show the indicator. Inside here, I'm going to inject, I'm going to say const busy service, and I'm going to say that this is going to be, I'm going to inject the busy service in here, busy service. And after doing this, I'm going to pipe this, uh, instead of returning the request, I'm going to pipe into it. So I'm going to say pipe. And once we are in here, I'm going to add the delay. Uh, for example, I'm going to add the delay of, um, two seconds, I'm going to put in 2000 milliseconds. And I'm going to say finalize once now we we are we are done loading, I'm going to add the finalize from rxjs. And I'm going to say I'm going to add the method. And this method is going to be pointing to a busy service dot idle. And it's going to be idle and put in here. And that's all. And the reason I added this delay is to add some of the delay so as to be able to see how the request is going to be sent and how the indicator is going to be shown. Once you deploy your application, there's no need to put in the delay in here. Make sure you remove this delay and make it zero or remove this property at all. I, add the, I added this because I wanted to show you how it is going to be looking like. All right, so I'm going to go back into my application here and go into the Angular and try to reload this. And I'm going to go back to the home. Whenever I click on employees, you can see that there is a delay, but the router is not showing. I'm going to try to restart the server to see if now it will solve the issue. So I'm going to go into where the server is and I'm going to restart it. And after starting, I'm going to go again here. And when, once I click on employees, let me check again. Uh, let me check into the interceptor. I can see that we forgot to call the busy service. I'm going to say this dot um, busy service. And I'm going to, uh, to call the busy here. And that will resolve the issue. I'm going to say busy service because we we made this as a const, so I'm going to load. Once it loads, you can see that now the loading indicator is shown here before we load any of the data. So whenever you click on employees, you can see that the loading indicator is being shown. And once you decrease the, um, once you decrease this delay, you will see there will be a tremendous change into how the uh, this is loading and can see that at some point you can't see it when you you don't refresh and take a look and that is the main reason of adding the delay so as to be able to see on how the rudder is being loaded uh, this was a bit of a long video on how to implement this simple feature but if you use this setup and you put this approach into your application it will be much more easier and clean and everyone will be impressed by the way you implement these kind of things. Let me know in the comments, did you like the video? I know you liked it. If you met with any problem, 
write it in the comment if you like this video go ahead and press the like button if you are coming on this channel for the first time make sure you subscribe and if you want to help our channel to grow there is a patreon link in the description go go ahead and donate a dollar or two it will help us to grow so see you next time with the other kuru angira uh, videos make a suggestion in your comment on the videos that you want me to make for you and i'm always open to that so see you next time ciao